punishment-free parenting. The why, the how and the alternatives. Brought to you by the Dad Vibes. Introduction. The words punishment and discipline are used interchangeably. The word, discipline, comes from the Latin disciplina which essentially means teaching, learning or instruction. Punishment is when we look to inflict or impose a penalty on our children for something they've done. To discipline means to teach. To teach is to show and explain how to do something. We don't need to punish to teach. Traditionally if a child has displayed challenging behavior then we've been taught that in order for them to learn we need to shame or scold them. We've been taught that we need to send them to time out, withdraw our love and essentially punish them in order for them to learn. To help shift your perspective, Dr. Jane Nelson said, where did we ever get the crazy idea that in order to make children do better, first we have to make them feel worse. Think of the last time you felt humiliated or treated unfairly. Did you feel like cooperating or doing better? Before I dive in, let me share the example of Bob, and why punishment falls over as an effective strategy to help our kids. Once upon a time a child called Bob felt angry. A valid emotion, we as adults feel all of the time. Bob doesn't have sufficient brain development to regulate his anger, or the language to communicate how he's feeling, so Bob lashed out and threw his toy against the wall. Bob's parents yelled, Don't you dare do that again. Give me that toy. I'm putting it in the bin. The yelling escalated the situation. Bob found his calm but felt unseen and alone. Bob had to apologize for being angry and lashing out. Let's talk about Bob for a moment, and I'm sure many parents can relate in some way to this scenario. As challenging as these high-stress situations are, we're provided with an opportunity to help and teach our children. In this specific example, Bob was provided with nothing to help him do better next time, other than to suppress his emotions and that there were no alternatives to how he behaved. If you struggle to decouple your child's behavior and emotions, think about it like this. Emotion refers to the feelings and internal states a child experiences, such as frustration, anger, fear, or sadness. Behavior, on the other hand, refers to the outward actions and expressions that result from those emotions, which may include screaming, crying, hitting, or other disruptive behaviors. It's essential we acknowledge and validate our child's emotions. Letting our child know that it's okay to feel upset or angry helps them learn that their emotions are normal and acceptable. While it's important to validate emotions, it's also important we address the disruptive behavior separately. This means focusing on the action or behavior that is not acceptable while still recognizing and respecting the underlying emotion, which may sound something like this. I understand that you're angry, hitting is not an okay way to express that, and just to reiterate for those listening to the audiobook. I understand that you're angry, hitting is not an okay way to express that. Next section, moving away from punishment. When we feel the need to punish our child, be it screaming, yelling or even spanking, chances are, they're pushing our boundaries, testing a limit we've set, or displaying some form of challenging behavior. Maybe you've spent an hour making them a lovely meal which they're refusing to eat, maybe they're on their fourth meltdown of the day because you served their lunch in a blue bowl and they wanted it in a yellow bowl, or maybe they're downright refusing to turn off the TV. Depending on the age of our child it may be that you need to model how to effectively regulate your emotions, or it might be that you need to model what appropriate behavior looks like when you're frustrated, angry or upset. In these moments if you're able to respond to your child with a level of calm, if only some of the time, then you're well placed to teach your child those all important life lessons. I get it, it's difficult to move forward with this when you really struggle with regulating your own emotions, and that's something all parents need to work on, every single day. Children learn what they see, and they certainly learn what they live. So if we're aggressive towards our child then our child will learn to be aggressive, they'll learn that that's how adults deal with situations, they yell, they shout and they shame. For me, a huge motivator in moving past punishments was appreciating that my little one needed me during his worst moments. If we're shunning our child in those challenging moments, if we're withdrawing our love and sending them into a corner to deal with these big emotions all alone, then what are we actually teaching them? And further to that, if we're aggressive, if we're yelling or spanking them, then what are we teaching them? We're teaching them that their big feelings don't matter. We're encouraging them to suppress their emotions. We're teaching them that we're unavailable when they need us most. If our aim is to raise emotionally intelligent children who display empathy towards others, then we need to meet them with compassion and empathy, not just in their best moments, but their worst moments too. Before moving on to the next section, let me share an important quote by Catherine M. Wallace. Listen earnestly to anything your children want to tell you, no matter what. 
If you don't listen eagerly to the little stuff when they're little, they won't tell you the big stuff when they're big, because to them all of it has always been big stuff. Next section, the why. Parenting is a journey filled with challenges, joys, and endless opportunities for growth both for us parents and our children. As I've covered, traditional methods of discipline often rely on punishment as a means of teaching right from wrong, but it goes without saying that there are far more effective and nurturing ways to guide our children towards responsible and respectful behavior. The fact you're here tells me you're seeking answers. Maybe you were punished as a child. Maybe you find yourself punishing your child and want to seek alternative methods focused on connection. Regardless of why you're here, I'm sure you're wondering why. Why is punishment so negative for our children? It comes down to four things, or more specifically, four questions. Number one, are we building trust and connection? Punishment degrades trust and damages the parent-child relationship. When we choose to parent without punishment we focus on trust and maintaining a strong emotional connection with our child. Punishment can erode this trust and cause children to associate their parents with negative experiences. When trust and connection are preserved, our children are more likely to turn to us for guidance and support. Number 2. Do we encourage intrinsic motivation? Punishment often motivates children through fear or external pressure, which may lead to compliance but not genuine understanding. It's very easy to coerce kids into compliance, but we lose focus and it rarely teaches anything. Focusing on more positive methods fosters intrinsic motivation and helps our little ones develop a sense of responsibility and a desire to make good choices for their own benefit. Number 3. Are we teaching problem-solving skills? Punishment can suppress problem-solving skills as our kids may focus on avoiding consequences rather than learning from their mistakes. Parenting without punishment allows children to learn how to solve problems, make responsible choices, and understand the consequences of their actions. Number 4. Do we promote emotional regulation? Punishment can sometimes escalate emotional reactions and lead to heightened stress for both us as parents and our little ones. When we choose to parent without punishment we encourage emotional regulation by providing children with the tools and guidance to manage their feelings in constructive ways. When we punish young kids we damage their self-worth and self-esteem. If you grab my Parenting Without Punishment Toolkit you'll find a document titled, Fill Your Child's Cup, 5 Simple Ways to Parent Without Shame. So if you'd like to explore how we can start building our child's self-esteem and self-worth with real-life examples, be sure to grab your toolkit and check it out. Click the link in your welcome email to grab your copy of the toolkit which is full of guides and printable resources to help you towards parenting without punishment. Right, head over to the next page and let's start exploring the alternatives. Next section, the alternatives. Parenting without punishment is an approach that prioritizes trust, connection, and the development of responsible, emotionally resilient, and motivated individuals. By implementing positive alternatives to punishment, we can nurture our children's growth, build strong bonds, and create a loving and supportive environment where they can thrive and become the best versions of themselves. So, let's take a look at some of the alternatives. Number 1. Communication. Talk to your child about their feelings, thoughts, and actions. Listen actively and empathetically, encouraging them to express themselves without fear of judgment. This can be a difficult one, I'm sure many parents will read this and think, why would I allow my child to be angry that they can't have a new Lego set? They should learn that no means no. Well, yes, we can absolutely set and hold a boundary, but as mentioned earlier, at the same time we can validate their big feelings. If we can create an environment where our child feels comfortable talking about their feelings and emotions, then this helps them learn to express themselves more effectively. Often we're tempted to teach during the height of a tantrum, but save the lecture for later. Try and focus on helping your child return to a level of calm, whilst holding a boundary if needed, and then when you're both more regulated, you can have the chat about what appropriate behavior looks like. Number two, clear and consistent boundaries establish clear and age-appropriate expectations for your child's behavior. When your little one knows what is expected of them, they are more likely to meet those expectations. Boundaries are so important for our children, they're a crucial part of their healthy development. We must ensure we're consistent with our boundaries, when we're inconsistent with them, we cause confusion for our little one. As tempting as it is to say, yes, to their demands for an easy life, appreciate that by saying, yes, and, no, some of the time, we inadvertently cause confusion in the minds of our children and therefore we will see that limit-pushing behavior increase because they know those boundaries are susceptible to being dropped if they push hard enough. Number 3. 
Focus on cooperation. This is a tough one because often when our child is being disruptive or displaying challenging behavior we can slip into battle mode, it quickly becomes them versus us. If your child lashes out, becomes frustrated, isn't listening, won't get dressed, is having a meltdown, or is refusing to have a bath. Whatever it may be, as human beings we naturally move into battle mode which never ends well. But if we want to move forward and help our child to learn, develop and thrive, we need to shift this thinking to us versus the problem. To do this effectively, we need to provide a safe space for our kids to calm down and reflect on their behavior. Join them in this space and offer support and guidance. Number four, model repair. Repair isn't something that gets discussed enough. Quite often, parenting-related content is focused on what we should do when it comes to engaging with our little ones. But the fact is, we're only human, we make mistakes, we stumble, and we will snap at our little ones when we have very little patience, or we're tired and exhausted at the end of a very long day. Of course, our children need to see us being authentic, they need to learn that we make mistakes, but we need to see these stumbling blocks as opportunities, opportunities to model repair and teach our little ones that we're accountable for our actions. We need to get comfortable with saying sorry to our kids, with putting our hands up and saying we've made a mistake. We need to get comfortable with acknowledging their feelings and apologizing when we've done wrong. Repair is so important for our kids, it teaches them some very important life lessons. So the next time you snap at your child at the end of a long day, yes it isn't ideal, and yes we need to take steps to ensure we're meeting our little ones from a place of calm, but use these moments as opportunities to teach. Modeling repair not only teaches important life skills but also contributes to the development of emotionally resilient, empathetic, and accountable individuals who can build healthy relationships and navigate life's challenges effectively. Above all, we model what a healthy relationship looks like, something our kids need to be aware of as they grow older and form relationships with others. Next section, conclusions. Remember, we're playing the long game. Yes, punishment works if your aim is to get your child to comply and conform. Punishment will give you that short-term modification in behavior, but this behavior change isn't because your child has magically learned how to regulate their emotions, the behavior modification is achieved through fear. And that's exactly what we want to avoid, we want to avoid fearful parenting, we need our children to trust us as their parents, and to show compassion as we provide them with guidance through their lives. The goal here is to raise emotionally intelligent human beings, we want our children to learn the importance of compassion and being empathetic towards other people. Research shows that yes, punishment sometimes works to get obedience, but it does nothing for the parent-child relationship. When punishment is used, fear and anger enter the relationship, and that affects communication, trust, respect and the joy of being together. I hope you were able to take some helpful actions from this guide. I've touched on a number of areas but if you'd like to dive deeper, I urge you to explore my Parenting Without Punishment Toolkit. The toolkit includes over $100 worth of guides and printables, and as a thank you for reading this guide, you can get everything today for a special price, so click the link in the email to claim your offer. Guides like this one are great, but they only just touch the surface. We can't begin to explore parenting without punishment if we're continually frustrated, annoyed or unable to regulate our own emotions when interacting with our kids. When we actively work on regulating our own emotions, we create a more supportive, loving, and emotionally healthy environment for our children. This not only benefits the parent-child relationship but also contributes to the child's emotional development and overall well-being. Therefore I wanted to create a toolkit that I could direct parents to, so they are able to put this into action. Through my guides and printable worksheets, I believe you'll be empowered to begin working on yourself and boosting the relationship you have with your child. Thank you for listening. Peace out.